Hello friends, this is Nishant. I am here with the first video for my YouTube channel. I would like to begin by talking about one of the most important investigations in the field of medicine and cardiology, that is ECG. ECG was discovered more than 100 years ago and till date it is the most efficient way to look at the heart's electrical activity. So let's begin by talking about the introduction and basics of the ECG. The ECGs and the diagrams in my presentation are borrowed from these two websites. I have provided links to these websites in the description section of this video. Those ECGs were taken after permission from the authors or owners of this website. Let's begin by talking about the cardiac conduction system. As we all know, the current under normal circumstances originates in the SA node. From the SA node, it spreads throughout the atria and through the internal tracts, it goes to the AV node. In AV node, there occurs something called as the AV nodal delay. There is slowing of conduction of current through the AV node, which is called as AV nodal delay. It ensures that the atria depolarize prior to the depolarization of ventricles. Then there comes bundle of His. The bundle of His further divides into a right bundle branch and a left bundle branch. The left bundle branch further divides into anterior fascicle and posterior fascicle. As you can notice from this diagram, the posterior fascicle is thick and stout as compared to the anterior fascicle. It has some clinical importance that I am going to highlight in the lecture on the conduction disorders or the bundle branch blocks. The fascicles and the right bundle branch divide into Purkinje network. The Purkinje networks are the fast conducting fibers that cause spread of current from this part that is the septum till the base of the ventricle in relatively quick fashion that results in depolarization of entire ventricle almost at the same time. If you have this much knowledge of conduction system, I think you will be in a very comfortable position to read about the ECG. Let's talk about the most basic thing in recording of an ECG that is the ECG paper. The ECG paper as you can see in this diagram is a two dimensional structure with vertical being one dimension and horizontal being another. The vertical dimension records the voltage and the horizontal dimension records the time. How I like to remember it is that both words vertical and voltage have first letter as V in them. You also see multiple boxes in this ECG paper. It's, it's quite helpful if you divide them into two categories. Number one, that is small box. and Number two, large box. Now one small box is equal to one millimeter and one large box is equal to horizontally or vertically, it's five millimeters. If you remember these few facts, it will form a very strong base for you guys to learn the ECG. An ECG is often described as being a standard 12 lead ECG. So what does the word standard mean? What it means is that you saw a rectangle like this at either the beginning or end of the ECG. What it signifies, the height of the rectangle is one centimeter and what it signifies is that one centimeter is equal to one millivolt or one millimeter is equal to 0 0.1 millivolt. That's the meaning of standardization. They often ask this in the MBBS prof practical exams. Now you know how to answer that question. A standard ECG consists of 12 leads of which six are limb leads and six are chest leads. The limb leads are lead 1, 2 and 3 and lead AVR, AVL and AVF. 
what i also like to remember is the position of these leads with respect to the position of heart if we imagine heart as being in the center of this diagram we can say that lead 1 is probably looking at the heart from the horizontal position from the left side lead avl is probably looking at the heart from the left shoulder lead avr is probably looking at the heart from the right shoulder it seems that lead 2 is looking at the heart from the left foot lead 3 is looking at the heart from right foot and lead avf is looking at the heart from the umbilicus what i also want you guys to remember is that the lead avl and avr both make angle of 30 degrees with the horizontal and lead 2 and lead 3 make angle of 30 degrees with the vertical this is going to prove crucial while calculating the axis so i would request you guys to please draw this diagram as it will help us tremendously in the future the six chest leads i was talking about in the last slide are these v1 to v6 they are placed as follows lead v1 is placed in the right fourth intercostal space parasternally lead v2 is placed in the left fourth intercostal space parasternally then we place lead v4 in the fifth intercostal space left fifth intercostal space in the mid clavicular line then we place lead v3 midway between v2 and v4 then we place lead v5 and v6 in the fifth intercostal space left fifth intercostal space in the anterior axillary line and mid axillary line respectively it is very important to know the placement of chest leads because switching in their placement can lead to bizarre ecg changes and that may lead us into thinking that there is some pathology when there is none so i want you guys to note this down for our convenience we do groupings of lead leads that is we divide leads into various groups based on which wall of the heart do they look at now lead 2 3 and lead avf look at the inferior wall of heart lead v1 to v4 look at the anterior and septal wall of heart lead 1 avl v5 and v6 look at the lateral wall of heart then it's very important to know that lead v1 looks directly at the right atrium and lead avr also looks through the right atrium into the cavity of left ventricle then not very commonly used but are very important are the leads of posterior wall these are v7 to v9 if you remember these groupings it will be very helpful for you guys to remember the myocardial infarctions of different walls so i want you guys to note this down i want to show you guys a schematic view of how normal waveforms in ecg look like in a single beat so a single beat in normal ecg in say lead 2 looks like this a p wave a qrs complex and a t wave a p wave looks something like this and it denotes atrial depolarization then a qrs wave looks something like this and it denotes ventricular depolarization then there comes a t wave which looks like this and it denotes ventricular repolarization now i talk about each one of them in great detail as well as some segments and intervals in great details in the next video as it was not possible to cover the normal as well as abnormal appearances in a single video i have made separate videos on wave segments and intervals you will often hear in the words someone describing the ecg as being in the sinus rhythm what it means so a ecg in sinus rhythm should have three cardinal features a p wave should be upright that is 
positive deflection in lead 1 and lead 2. Then each P wave should be followed by a QRS complex like this. Then the rate should be between 60 to 99. I am going to talk about in detail how to calculate the heart rate from the given ECG. So let's move ahead and get into some depths of the ECG. Before talking about rate and rhythm, I want to give you guys a bird's eye view of cardiac axis. So cardiac axis is defined as direction of wave of ventricular depolarization in a vertical plane. That's quite a mouthful and slightly hard to understand. So what I, how I like to go about it is like this. I like to divide the dimensions into two, vertical and horizontal. The vertical dimension being the y-axis and the horizontal dimension being the x-axis. If you imagine the heart to be sitting at the origin, the normal axis lies somewhere like this. That is, the current of ventricular depolarization is directed towards the apex. Now, if I were to tell you the values of normal values of cardiac axis, I would say it lies somewhere the normal axis lies between minus 30 to plus 90 degrees. So if you ever are asked in your practical exam, what, where does the normal cardiac axis lie in the vertical plane? I think you should be comfortable to answer that it lies between minus 30 to plus 90 degrees. Now I'm going to erase this thing so that I could explain the next thing in detail. Whenever looking for cardiac axis, I want you guys to look at the QRS complexes. So a QRS complex can either be predominantly positive or predominantly negative, or it can be something like isoelectric, like little bit positive and the same amount of negative. So we will not talk about this in this video as it's a slightly tough concept to understand. I'll just talk about these two, but I promise that I'll talk about cardiac axis in detail in my third video. So I want you guys to look at the QRS complexes of these three leads. That is lead one, lead two and lead three. Now when looking at them, you should determine if the if they are predominantly positive or predominantly negative deflections now if you see a qrs complex that is predominantly positive in lead 1 and predominantly positive in lead 2 you can comfortably say that the axis is normal that is the axis lies between minus 30 to plus 90 degrees now as it's a two dimension thing it can either go to the left or to the right. Again, I talk about detail. I talk about them in detail in my third video. For now, to identify if there is left axis deviation or there is right axis deviation, I want you guys to remember few things about these three leads. If you see a uh, lead one QRS complex that is positive, like lead one, is looking like this and lead 2 that is negative that is lead 2 QRS complex that is looking like this it means there is left axis deviation now I'm going to erase this thing again so that I could explain right axis deviation in right axis deviation I want you guys to focus on lead 1 and lead 3 if you see lead 1 that is predominantly negative and lead 2 that is predominantly positive lead I'm sorry lead 3 that is predominantly positive it means the axis is towards rightward so that's a very simple way of remembering the axis and if there is any axis deviation left or right now I'm going to move on to the next slide where we talk about calculating rate and rhythm.